Let me ask you a question. Do you ever feel like you're climbing the ladder, yet you're getting closer and closer to rock bottom? Like you're doing so many things right in life, but you feel wrong on the inside. I promise you that I've been there and I believe I can help. And I want to invite you to join me on July 22nd and 23rd for my next course, The Authentically Fulfilled Life. This course is based off of my best-selling book, Your Butt is Too Big. We're talking about the seven principles from the book that can help you go from pain to promise. I believe that things from your past that are blocking your blessings are things that you can grow from, heal from, learn from, and evolve through so that you can walk into the authentically fulfilled life that you've been praying for. So would you join me? Sign up now. You see that there is already a link down below in the video's description. Right now, it's $100 off the cost. Yes, you heard me right. $100 off the cost. And it's $100 per household, meaning if you and your spouse want to attend live, you'll be able to do that for one cost. Listen, you'll have the ability to watch virtually or some people will be able to join me live in person. Register today. Join me on the 22nd and 23rd. If you know somebody who needs to take part in this course, please let them know as well. All right, that's all I've got for you. I look forward to seeing you all very soon. And now let's get to the reason you came. Enjoy today's episode. The Lord in his goodness, he knows when we're ready. He knows the right time. And if we can learn to trust him and wait, right? Because while we're waiting, he's working. Mm. And he's, he's developing us. He's building us. I mean, my husband asked me all the time, he goes, would, could you believe, would you believe 10 years ago that you would be where you are today? Mm. Cause he knew that was my dream. And mm-hmm. he watched as someone else started to build it. And, um, he's like, look what God has done. But if I would have jumped ahead, if I would have walked in bitterness or comparison or all those things that are so easy to, were so easy to get caught up in, mm-hmm. I don't think I would have been able to to experience all the Lord had for me during that season of waiting. The perspective that we take into our lives is so incredibly important. The way that you look at your situations and your circumstances, it matters. And there's been some times in my life when I didn't really, I didn't really see hope. I didn't see faith. I didn't see anything to believe in. There were some moments in my life where, if I'm being honest, it was so dreary, so bleak, so dark that I didn't want to live. And I remember when it was that I finally found hope and and I found it in God. And it, and it didn't happen in anybody's church. It didn't happen even in during a Bible study. It wasn't one of those moments that maybe is stereotypical. But instead, I woke up one day not wanting to live, not wanting to exist, not wanting to go on in the same fight, in the same battle I'd been struggling in. And I got in a car one day and I, I yelled, screamed, cussed. And it was mainly directed at the God who may or may not exist. If you are real, if you do exist, then make sure you give me some hope today. Change my life or else I don't want to live my life. That was actually the day everything changed. It was, it was next month, seven years ago, <laughs> June of 2016. That was when my view became a, a godly view. Dare I say, a Christian view. And, and I'm so happy that, that now I can be a person who spreads light and spreads hope. And the guest that I'm bringing on today, she does so much of the same thing in her own way. And it is profound. It is amazing. It is awe-inspiring. Dr. Trudy, who you are about to meet, is the host of The Christian View, but she does so much more than that. Her entire life is a ministry. And when you just get a chance to watch her, whether you're watching her hosting or watching her leading a Bible study or teaching or doing whatever it is that she's doing, it is clear that she has spent time with God and that God spent the time to heal her, to grow her, to change her, to mold her. And when she speaks, there's something believable that makes you feel like just maybe you can experience the same thing in your own life. So right now, I would like to welcome Dr. Trudy Simmons onto Hope Rising. 
Hello, Maurice. Thank you so much for having me. You are so welcome. Love being with you. Yes, I am so happy to be with you. Now, this is uh, this is the roles reversed. I got a chance to join you on camera uh, just about a month or two ago. Yes. And yes. so I wanted you to be uh, one of the people who joined me during season one um, because I think that you are just such a light, such a, a person who makes a difference and an impact. And so, would you mind just uh, beginning by telling our our listeners? And, and our viewers a little bit about what it is that you do. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I am a wife of 26 years, um, a mom of a 17-year-old um, son and a seven-year-old little girl that we were allowed to adopt um, when she was six months old. Um, and then I am the host and the executive producer of The Christian View, which is a Christian View um, version of The View. We take today's hot and challenging topics and we weigh it against the Word of God. And, and just what does God say about how we do life? You know, because God, He gave us His um, His written Word. He gave us a love letter. And so we can open it up and know what He says about every situation. So we do that. We take it, um, we take, there's a panel of five of us and we just discuss what God's Word says. And then I'm able to also interview amazing people like yourself, Maurice, and other people who can come to the studio. But i um, very thankful to do that. I'm also a um, Christian counselor and Christian life coach, executive coach. And so I'm able just to, to pour into people um, each and every day. And I'm just thankful that I get to do it. Thankful that the Lord has entrusted me to be able to be his hands and feet on this earth. Mm, I love that so much. And so that was so multifaceted. And so I guess I want to hear just, uh, you've got multiple journeys within that story, and I guess we need to hear a little bit of, of all of it. So wh where did you get started? Did you always know that you were meant to be in front of a camera, that you were meant to, to counsel people and coach people, or what, what has your journey been that brought you there? <laughs> no, um, I was a, com a complete mess for, for half of my life, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but when, when the Holy Spirit gets hold of you, he can, he can do the miraculous things through us, but yeah. Yeah, just um, didn't think. I, I mean, I was very insecure. I was the person who, please don't, you know, please don't call on me, teacher, because I don't think my voice would be loud enough to be heard. I just mm. always felt like I needed to be in the back of the room and not in the front of the room. Um, and just growing up, very insecure and very um, emotionally unstable, you know. But God just did a work in me, which was. Um, which was amazing. You know, Maurice, I, um, I realized when I don't, I think I was age 16, 17, that mm -hmm. I didn't want to be, um, I didn't want to be a mess, you know, and I was mm -hmm. a mess. And, um, so I started a journey to healing and, and deliverance. And it was a long journey because there was a lot of, a lot of stuff, but through time and through ministry and counseling and deliverance, the Lord, um, in his graciousness started setting me free. So you know, that scripture, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Mm -hmm. And so once you've been through the fire, you want to go back and grab people out of the fire, right? And so that's been my life journey. And the fact that I'm on TV and speaking is is kind of ironic because that just, in my own nature, that's not me. My mm. nature is, um, you know, very much an introvert. But when you allow the Holy Spirit to work in you, he, he kind of just... <laughs> You know, when you say yes, he he's all about it. Mm. So what made you say yes? I mean, what what is it about the journey that you specifically have had with God? I mean, I hear what you're saying, that you've experienced this, this deliverance and this healing. But those words, for many even people who call themselves Christians, there's a lot of people who have never experienced any transformative experience with God. They never changed. Their thinking didn't alter. Their heart did not move at all. They just started going to church or started right. reading the scriptures, right? right? So what is it about that experience with God that really made you say yes and then con continue to say yes? You know, I believed that there was a better way. I did not, you know, you had mentioned in the opening that you didn't want to live. You woke up one day not wanting to live. And and I did the same thing. Um, I used to struggle really badly with depression. I, you know, I was a cutter for many years, just trying to get rid of the pain. And 
I just remember the Holy Spirit just saying, there's a better way. And like the lady with the issue of blood, I mean, I did everything I could just to touch his garment, just to get healed because I believed that he wanted to set me free. I believed he wanted me to walk in healing. I didn't know what it looked like. Um, I didn't know what the journey would entail, but it was a, it was a long journey. I mean, sometimes God will heal us instantly. And then sometimes he'll take us on a, on a, on a journey of healing. And mine was, um, a journey of healing, having to undo the negative mindset that I had had so, so long ingrained in me and the way I felt about myself and believed about myself, you know, I had, um, to really rewire the way I thought and the way I spoke. And it, it really didn't come easy, but I knew because I had seen other people set free. I knew that there was freedom and I really wanted it at, at any cost. Mm. So what did it cost you? Well, it cost me everything, right? It cost, <laughs> it cost me the comfort, you know. Now, you know, when the Lord tells me to do something and I and I don't obey the first time, he'll tell me to do it again. And then he'll tell me to do it again until I, you know, till I obey and, and do what he, he tells me to do. But, you know, I say it cost me everything, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't trade. I wouldn't trade it, you know, because now I'm able to help other people get set free. And I get to share the gospel, the good news, which set me free. Mm. So, so take me through the journey as you, as you decide to actually start helping people, or you say yes to beginning to help people. What, what do you feel like is the strongest gift that you have? I mean, what is it, what is it that you feel most driven to do as you assist people and, and you minister to people in life? You know, my, oh, my gift. Okay. I am able to see through the lies, mm. to speak the truth. And to say that, Maurice, not everyone wants to hear the truth, mm. but everyone needs to hear the truth. Yeah. You know, just like I was having a conversation with someone the other day, and I was able to see through what they were saying to really get to the heart of the matter, mm -hmm. um, to be able to speak to that woundedness in their heart. Because so often when we walk around wounded and broken, we want to cover it up. We want to hide it. That's why we all wear masks, right? Mm. I think 95% of people walk around wearing a mask because they're afraid to be real. But the gift I have, if it's a gift, is I can see through that mask and I can speak to that heart issue so that if they want healing and they want truth, they can receive it. You said something there, and some people might not have caught it, but because you and I have the same gift, I heard it loud and clear. <laughs> you said, if it's a gift, because that type of a gift also carries a burden, right? Yes. Um, and it's a double, it's a multifaceted burden. There yeah. is the concept that number one, I sometimes have access to knowledge about you that you'd prefer for me not to have. Right. I can see things that I can't unsee and hear things that I can't unhear. Uh -huh. And there's a weight that that carries. It, yes. But it also means that if I can see your brokenness, I can also see my own. That's right. That's <laughs> and, right. so, and so I don't do a very good job of hiding from me like some people do. Um, and so I have to be very careful that if God is showing it to me, it's for a reason. Why am I running? Why am I hiding? That's right. He's highlighting it for a reason. Someone once told me, she said, you have the gift of mirroring. And so when people mm. look at you, they see their own inadequacy. They see their own faults and their own failures. And that scares people away. Mm -hmm. But in my mind, I'm like, I don't want it to scare people away. I want it. I want to use because if the Lord is highlighting it, that means that he's ready to heal it. And we've got to be OK. We've got to be ready for that, too. You know what I mean? Um because healing can come in waves, but we've we've got to be ready for it. What if a person doesn't think they can heal? Like, how does a person get the hope that they qualify for healing? Let's say they're listening to this podcast or watching this podcast. They're a believer type, okay? They pray to God, they believe, to, they read their Bible, but they think that that miracle healing stuff is for everybody else. It's not for me. You you don't know, Dr. Trudy, what I've been through. You haven't experienced the pain I've experienced. You don't know what he or she said to me over and over again. How does a person find that type of hope and belief that they too qualify for the healing of Jesus? You know, um, I was that person. I was that person that said, it's, it, the healing's not for me. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy enough. Um, there's nothing good in me. And you know, in and of ourselves, there isn't anything good in us except Jesus Christ. But 
I had to come to the realization that if that was the only person on this world, in this world, that Christ would have died for me because of that love. And at one point or another, we've got to start one step at a time, believing and pressing in. And even if we don't feel like it, even if it doesn't feel real, we've got to take that next step and take that next step and let that belief and that faith start to grow inside of us so that one day we can say, yes, he went for the one and that one was me. Mm. And so at some point, it gets planted deep on the inside of you that not only are you meant to go after the one at a time, but you're meant to go after the many and you're supposed to use the very platforms that are on this earth in order to minister to people. And so you you have this idea to, to begin the, the Christian view. So how did that come about? Is this divine revelation? Is this strategic planning? Where, where did this, this all come from? You know, it's funny. I can say, you know, it's it's always all God. But I had this vision and dream of the Christian view years and years ago. Mm. And um, the Lord and His goodness did not allow me to start. So I was not the start of the Christian view. Um, he allowed another lady to start it. And then he brought me in um, in the third year of it. And so before mm. I did the Christian view, I had this show called everyday living with Dr. Trudy. And it was, mm. it was great. It was fun. It was, it was amazing because I would take people through healing steps, deliverance steps, you know, things like that. And then the Lord told me to take a break from that. And about that time they needed someone to take over the Christian view. And so, um, it was kind of like the Lord let someone else build it. It was my dream. He let someone else build it. And then he brought it back to me at the right time, because he knew at that point I was ready. Ooh, there's so much in that. Mm -hmm. How many people have a vision for what they feel like their life should be, and then because they see other people walking out the steps, they believe that their time has passed, right. that the moment can never come, and mm -hmm. they can never live out the dream. And you're li literally the living example of what can happen when sometimes the Lord says, well, no, we'll let somebody else build some of the foundation. Right. And I'll build you and your foundation. So you'll be getting the screen time in right. another place. And then I'll walk you into the very platform that I promised you when you're ready. Absolutely. And I think that's the important part when we're ready, because if we get ahead of ahead of God and we're not ready, then what's going to happen? Well, usually we're going to fall or we're going to fail. And right. it's not going to be the type of failure where we learn. It's just going to crush us. It's going to crush us. And and the Lord in his goodness, he knows when we're ready. He knows mm -hmm. the right time. And if we can learn to trust him and wait, right? Because while we're waiting, he's working. Mm. And he's he's developing us. He's building us. I mean, my husband asked me all the time. He goes, "Would could you believe? Would you believe ten years ago that you would be where you are today?" Because mm. he knew that was my dream, and mm -hmm. he watched as someone else started to build it. And um, he's like, "Look what God has done." But if I would have jumped ahead, if I would have walked in bitterness or comparison or all those things that are so easy to were so easy to get caught up in, mm -hmm. I don't think I would have been able to to experience all the Lord had for me during that season of waiting. Mm. Well, I will even say that the Lord gives grace if you ever do have those moments. Because he does. Right. Yes. Because, you know, it's so easy when we when we give our testimonies that we we want to highlight the goodness of God that he held us and kept yes. us. Right. But I also know there's moments where people go, Maurice, the way that you held strong and you and I'm like, I didn't always hold strong. And I did. No. Sometimes my my mind went one place and I had mm -hmm. to remember, take every thought captive, every making thought. it obedient unto Christ. Right. And right. so. It's Did okay you? to have ugly cries, right? Yes. We can we can ugly cry. It is it, it is okay. And, and I'm not I'm not saying I didn't because I did. You That's know? it. Many times I've ugly cried, but like you said, God is gracious and He's merciful and He's forgiving. And so, yeah. Mm. So, what is the beauty that comes out of the ugly cry? The beauty that comes out of the ugly cry. Gosh, just the um, for me, the knowing that God is always faithful. Mm -hmm. Um, it's certainly not less wrinkles because <laughs> with the ugly cries, you know, it develops more wrinkles, but, but knowing that God is good, right? God is good. And I think about David and how he, you know, when he went to fight Goliath, what did he do? 
He remembered the things that God had done for him in the past. And so in the waiting and in the ugly cry, it develops the beauty of faithfulness, the beauty of trust, the beauty of knowing that God is truly going to work all things out for my good and his glory if I if I wait on him and I'm mm. and I um believe in him, you know, but the ugly cries, they're real. And I think the ugly cries, I mean, it says he holds, he catches all of our tears. Mm. He's there in the midst of, well, God, what about me? Because how often do we think, well, did we miss it? Or is God not going to come through? And then, then he does, you know? Yes, I do know. And that, see that to me, that's, that's part of the story that when we share it, that's where I think more hope comes from and more faith for people, right? right? That they do start to think, well, am I the broken one? I'm watching Maurice on, on the broadcast. I'm watching Dr. Trudy. Mm -hmm. And they have this willpower within their faith, right? Where they're so anchored in God. They don't waver. And I'm over here just wavering. Well, no. <laughs> We cried the tears and right. we felt the pain. And then we realized there was more than just that happening, that right. God was holding us while we were crying, that he was shifting something for us while we were waiting. And mm -hmm. that, those are the lessons that build the faith. Do you remember that poem, The Footprints in the Sand? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, he's, he's, just, he's, he's carrying us. And if we can remember, you know, the enemy wants us to forget all the things that God has done for us, all the goodness, the good things that he's done. And that's why I think David said, you know, he, you helped me kill the lion and the bear. Mm -hmm. And if we can write down, Lord, I remember when I was broken and you came. I remember when I felt isolated and alone and, and you showed up because those are real life experiences. But God is always going to show up and be faithful. Mm. And I think that it's those moments when we wonder, God, will you show up? If you let yourself look, that's when you'll learn who he is. Right. Sometimes we say, God, will you show up? And then we stop looking because we assume the answer is no. Right. Yeah, that's a powerful moment. And so yeah. as you, you started to walk into this platform and experience the dream, the, the vision fulfilled, what, what has that journey been like for you? What has it grown within you and matured in you as you've gone through this process? It has been the hardest uh, process of my life. Um, mm. Honestly, it has been, um, there's been a lot of rejection. There's been a lot of heartache. There's been a lot of tears, a lot of prayers. Mm. Um, and in that, there's come up, there's been a lot of, um, you know, pointing fingers at myself. Lord, did you really call me to this? Lord, is this really your will? Because <laughs> if it is, why is it so hard? Mm -hmm. um, why is there so much rejection from people? Um, but in the midst of all that, there's been a greater trust and a greater strength built in me. There's been a, a greater boldness to um, want to please God more than man, you know, because so often we, gotta, we have to check ourselves. Why are we doing what we do? Is it to please man or is it to please God? Mm. And so it's really, you know, it's really helped me hone in on, I want an audience of one. Um, and if no one else receives me, then, then, then I'm okay with that as long as I'm being obedient to the Lord. But it wasn't always like that because when I started into this ministry, um, it was really hard. It was really hard with people um, thinking that I shouldn't have been in, put in that position, that it wasn't my place to have that position, that they felt they needed that position. And so, um, or I wasn't, you know, equipped, qualified or called for mm -hmm. it. And so mm -hmm. it was a lot of hard, hard behind the scenes work, to be honest. Wow. No, and I appreciate that honesty. And I'm experiencing some of it in my own journey, right? Um, it, Jason will tell you just last week or was it two weeks ago, um, you know, we had a couple of guests that were scheduled and we were we were so excited. There was one person, I won't say who it is. We were so excited. Of, oh my gosh, I can't believe who we're about to interview. And yeah. like 20 minutes before the interview, they were like, oh, I can't do it today. Right. And so there, in yeah. those moments, that's when you find out your wounds yeah. and your scars. Right. Yes. Those are the moments where you go, why did this make me feel like less of a man and less of a good human and less capable? Right. Because you're realizing that all of your fears are on display and all of your all of your vulnerabilities right here. If you're really going on and all in for what God showed you, 
Right. It's frightening if people say no, if people don't watch, if, if there's so many things, and especially as you described, if there's also the interpersonal conflicts and things that can arise, it, these are all things that it, in the end, God uses to grow us. Right. All things work together for the Amen. good of those who love the Lord and are That's called right. according to his purpose. So you've done a bunch of growing, and now it seems like... You must have grown and hit a new milestone because, I mean, I know a couple of weeks ago I saw a Vander Holyfield. You know, I'm seeing like bigger names coming on the show. And that tells me that God is trusting you with even more. So how does that feel? Do you feel like you have you have entered into a new place with God and, and him trusting you or does it just feel the same? You know, that is so sweet. Um, <laughs> um I um so yes I do I do believe God has trusted me more but it it has come at a cost and I think mm. I had mentioned that on my my um Facebook live today that I had been through a year of just um if I can just say hellacious uh journey for a mm. whole year um I was being slandered and accused and um horrible things you know being said about me to the point that I really wanted to shut down mm. and I went pretty much quiet for, for about a year. And I just kept asking the Lord, praying and seeking and, and asking for his guidance, his protection. Lord, do you really want me to do this? And, um, and that's when he started opening, I'm going to cry. <laughs> um, that's when he started opening more doors for me because I felt like him say, I trusted you. You know, when I, when I could have lashed out back at the people who were coming against me, I remember the Holy Spirit saying, I'm in charge of your reputation. I've got your back. I've got your time. I've got your season. Mm. You've got to trust me. And Maurice, with every bit of my being, I wanted to defend myself. I wanted to say, but wait a minute, that's not true. I didn't, you know? Um, And um, I kept hearing the Holy Spirit say, I've got you. I've got Mm. your reputation. You just stay the course. You stay true. And I guess it's been what, when did I interview you? Uh, I think it was about a month and a half ago, maybe. So probably about two months ago, I really felt released to to come back and because I really, honestly, for all you viewers out there, I mean, I really wanted to quit. The, the mm. persecution was so bad, um, but I just felt like the Lord say, "I've got you, I've got mm. you." And many tears were cried this past year, but seeing His faithfulness come through, and to be honest, some of the people who um, came against me have actually come back and apologized mm. in the last couple of um, weeks. And so, so yes, I, I think that I'm thankful that God is trusting me on a new level. Um, but you know what they say about new levels? New levels, new devils. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I like, just have a, just a little bit of a, of a break for just, you know, um, but God is faithful. He, he is faithful and, um, and, and I'm thankful for his faithfulness. And so, yeah, oh, he was a, he was an interesting person to interview. He was he was very his story and his love for 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 Jesus is mm-hmm. is amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, but then I got to interview you. You know, <laughs> your, love and your story for Jesus is amazing too. And the Lord has so many amazing things in store for you that mm-hmm. I mean, you just it's just going to blow your mind what He has for you. And so I'm excited to see that. Amen. No, I I appreciate you saying that, and I believe that. Um, and you know, I'm going to share something with you. Two things with you that the Lord, the Holy Spirit, has said to me in the last month. And they'll both apply. Mm-hmm. Um, the first thing is a, is a phrase that I've started saying, and I've been saying, it hurts like heaven. Mm-hmm. And all that I mean by that is sometimes we, we associate the pain with hell. Mm-hmm. But I'm learning that sometimes God will allow a thing to happen in our lives, not because he wants us to be in pain, right. but he knows what is capable of coming out of us through the pain. Mm-hmm. And so people slander us and they, they talk about us and these things happen. But in the end, it number one, it shows you the character and consistency of God. That no matter what anybody says, he calls you daughter, he calls you friend, he calls you loved and trusted and courageous mm-hmm. and all these things. And then on top of that, it shows you you that you're capable of being strong in the midst of somebody else's weakness, mm-hmm. kind in somebody else's is um, dark moment. So that's the first thing. Mm-hmm. The, thing the second thing is, one thing that Holy Spirit said to me is, I hardened Pharaoh's heart. Mm-hmm. And one thing that I realized is that if Moses had gone into Egypt and said, hey, God says you got to let these people go, and then everybody left, they either would have said, 
thank God for Pharaoh. Pharaoh was so amazing and Pharaoh would have gotten all the credit or Moses would have gotten all the credit. Mm -hmm. But because Moses endured time after time after time after time after time of rejection after rejection, when the Israelites walked out, they didn't just say, thank you, Moses. They said, thank you, God. And so because your character is coming through after all the the trials and the tribulations, and I promise people were watching you, Mm -hmm. they see you coming out on the other side and Dr. Trudy can't get all the credit. So they say, thank you, Jesus. And, and I don't want him to. And I think that that's true because without a, without a test where we have a testimony, right? And we need to be able to praise God on the mountaintops and in the valley. And in order to get to the mountaintop, you got to go through the valley and climb up, right? Mm. And so God, you know, if, if everything is always um, bells and whistles, would we really seek God? I mean, that's a question we need to ask, right? Would we really seek him if if everything is always amazing? Or does it take those... Um, I like how you said the road to heaven, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, We need to take those roads to heaven because that's what makes us stronger, right? Mm. It just just makes us, it makes us stronger. And I'm thankful for, I mean, I don't want to go through them all the time, but I am thankful thankful that I can come out the other side because God is victorious. And, and that's when one of my prayers was, Lord, I want you to do what you need to do so that you will be glorified through this and that they will see that it wasn't me, it was, it was all him. And mm. just to take this pro- the spotlight off of me and make sure it's always on, on him. I love it. And so I know one of the things that, that you're doing, um, not just broadcasting, but that your company is also trying to do more and trying to prepare more believers for, mm-hmm. for their path and things. So could you tell our listeners or our viewers just a little bit more information on what other services you provide in, in case somebody is listening today or watching and they're like, man, I kind of want to experience her teaching, her training, the things that you offer. What else are, do you have available for people? Yeah. So, um, I just started these um, women's events to um, train and equip and empower women to be all that God's created them to be. So we host those every other month and they're locally, but we can always bring it to a church or a community whenever that door is open. Mm -hmm. Um, I do. I just started. I just finished an iron, my big Iron Man. So I just started redoing Facebook Live teaching. So you can follow that on um, the Christian View page and or YouTube. Um, so trying to train and equip women to walk in the fullness of what the Lord has for them, walk in their full identity, um, equip them to really know the Word of God and have it written on their heart so that they can go out and do life and do it well for God. Um, and then we have a magazine that we um, we produce four times a year. So I'm bringing that back in the fall. So lots of great um, equipping articles, um, Christ-centered articles. So on just on just on life because you know we we need to know how to do life, uh, Maurice. I think sometimes we forget <laughs> um, we forget how to do it. And I remember someone asking me one time, I wish that the Lord would just give us a manual. And I looked at the Bible and I was like, wait a minute, He did. <laughs> we just got to read it and apply it to to today, right? Mm. Because, um, you know, more people know what's on a, a cheeseburger at McDonald's than they do with the know what the Ten Commandments say. Well, yeah. um, and so we've got to get back to the basics. And so um, I just started up my counseling program again mm-hmm. and my coaching program. So I'm taking five new people in June mm-hmm. and um, counseling, coaching, and helping to equip them to go to the next level. So that's one-on-one and um, six um, in a Zoom class. Beautiful. I love it. I love it. So there's so much that you bring to the table. Yeah. And that's so true what you said, by the way, that number one, we have the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. And many people don't don't truly read it for themselves. You just allow someone else to, to read it. But there's so much revelation that comes from sitting in the word on your own mm-hmm. because God can show you things that you never saw sitting in a pew. Right. And, it, and it happens through that Holy Spirit revelation. And the other thing that I like to say is if you really want the manual, try talking to the person who wrote it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so true. You can't live on someone else's faith, right? And, and sometimes, you know, we need people to come alongside of us and hold us up in faith. Sure. But We can't discredit spending that time with God. And it doesn't have to be an hour a day. If you have an hour a day, that's great. But just opening up God's word, reading the Psalms or the Proverbs and just saying, Lord, speak to me, speak to my heart. And he's talking. It's just, are we too busy to listen? Mm, That's good. 
All right. So I, I don't want to take up too much more of your time and I'm looking at the clock. I have really enjoyed this and I want to make sure that, that we get a couple more things accomplished before we go. Um, so the first one is the question that I ask every guest. Oh, no. Yeah, I know. That's Everybody's always like, because it's deep, but it's kind of okay. cool. The, the answers that it has given us, Jason will tell you, our producer will tell you that it is amazing. The answers that we've gotten every week, which is how I knew it came from the Lord. Yeah. Um, before I ask you this question, uh, if you have been listening today or you've been watching, this has been blessing your life. Please make sure, number one, subscribe. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. If you're listening at any platform, subscribe there. Please leave a comment. Let us know what you've heard today that spoke to you. Um, lead us, leave a comment also with where where are you listening from today? We love to get all that information. Um, and as always, would you would you would you leave? Who do you want to see on the show? What do you want to hear us address and talk about? Jason and I are reading. We're watching. We want to hear it, and we want to make sure that you're experiencing things that truly do make your hope rise. So, with that said, Dr. Trudy, here is the question. So, I want you to imagine it is a hundred years from now, and there is a museum. And inside of this museum, it's filled with artifacts and, and, and replicas and, and resources from this day and age. And there is a room marked hope. Inside of that room, there is a time capsule. And there's a time capsule with your name on it. And when they open up the time capsule, there are pictures and there's pictures of you on your set of the Christian view. And there's, 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 there's you and, and notebooks from your, your therapy sessions and, and different things. And maybe you write some books and there's books there. There's all these things that represent Dr. Trudy. And then they get this clip. And this is your explanation to this individual who is in search of hope, of what hope even is to you. What do you say to that person? Oh, so there should be a drum roll before you ask that question. <laughs> should be a drum roll. So what is hope? What is hope to you? Hope to me. What is hope to me? You know, the first, I'm going to give you the first thing that came to my mind. Hope to me is looking in a child's eye with excitement, hope, and expectation that there's mm. always more and there's always love. Mm. Because if you think about a child, they are quick to forgive, uneasily offended. They walk in love. And you know what else they walk in? They walk in this supernatural freedom, right? And I think with hope, there's always freedom. Or with freedom, there's always hope. And we, scripture says we have to have that childlike faith. And what I would imagine is if every adult could grasp that and have the eyes of a child, the excitement of a child, the expectance of a child, that they can walk in unforgiveness, being unoffended, and walk in that supernatural love, I think that would be amazing. Mm, I love it. And it has been amazing to have you today as a guest and just to listen to your testimony and your story. Um, if someone has enjoyed this today, how do they find you? How do they find The Christian View? Where do they watch it? Um, just whatever you want to share, feel free to share any information you want. Yeah. I mean, you can follow us on the TV. We have a YouTube channel, Facebook, Instagram. Um, and you can always write me at drtrudysimmons at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you and pray with you. So yeah, any, any social media outlet we are on. So beautiful where you guys can see the information down below if you're watching today. And if you're listening, if you didn't catch it, just take a look at the description of today's recording and you will see that. And so Dr. Trudy, again, thank you so much for joining us today, for being such thank a light you. and a blessing to us. Um, and for those of you who tuned in today, we thank you as always for joining us. I hope that this has been um, an inspiration, motivational, and I hope what you really heard in today's message was that Dr. Trudy, at the end of the day, she can, she can be a doctor, she can be a host, and she can struggle just like everybody else. But when she leans on her faith, it does something for her that words can't quite describe 
but that people benefit from. I've felt that same thing in my life, and I hope that you will start to lean on that same type of faith and hope as you move forward. Uh, as always, I love to just give a shout out to Jason at EWT Productions. That is our, as you guys know, producer. Um, Jason is just a, a great man, uh, a man of integrity, a man of honor and faith, and he's also a man of excellence. Mm -hmm. So if you are looking to start your podcast and you need assistance with that, you want to have the, the best audio, you want some great ideas you want to make sure that you're confident your, your confident content reaches the world make sure you talk to jason uh, if you're watching today you see the information down below but it's jason at ewt productions or ewt productions is what you're going to type in on social media so you can find them but make sure you shout out jason today and then make sure you catch us next monday on hope rising where the unfulfilled go for fulfillment and where the inspired go to get their inspiration. We'll talk to you soon. And we're done. Woo! Good. Are we good? Are we happy? I'm happy. That was great. And Dr. Trudy, you said the first thing that came to mind was this beautiful analogy of like faith in a child. That was the first thing. That's so incredible. <laughs> yeah, when she, uh, she acted like she wasn't going to answer the question, then when the answer started coming out, I was like, oh. I mean, I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> like, it, like so profound. And, 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 and I mean, you know, just like with my own kid, I have a three-year-old. Yeah. And I see the same thing goes through the same ebbs and flows that I, you know, correct him at one point and then as soon as he's corrected he's coming for a hug yeah. and it's like wow that was the first thing yeah. <laughs> like, it, it was just incredible <laughs> well thank y'all for letting me be a part of this i appreciate it sure absolutely i hope i hope that you feel like you said things that that you were okay with saying because i know you went there and 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 even got a little teary-eyed <laughs> but i felt but i felt like that's i feel like people need that right, right? Because they, when they see a person like you, you're always so polished. And like, there's something deeper in that testimony when they see the teary eyes. Yeah, um, I, yeah, I didn't really mean to cry, but I didn't <laughs> cry that much. And I didn't say any names, right? I didn't say no, any names. Okay, no. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You I didn't, you didn't throw shade at anybody. You didn't make anybody feel bad. You just Thank said you. it wasn't easy. And then you showed enough grace to say, and the person called me and apologized. Yeah. You didn't have to say that. You could have just said they threw shade and then left you there. <laughs>